as a storyteller, you research and then you get to this jumping off point. This is when the story happened to be written down. But who told it to the person who wrote it down? And who told it to that person? And who told it back to that person? It just goes back and back in time. So that's sort of where this story comes from. Caridwin was a witch, a sorceress. She studied magic arts day and night. She conjured potions. She conjured in her great cauldron, gathering together all she needed for magic spells. Caridwin had a son, and I'd love to tell you that he was a handsome young man, but I'd be lying. He was hideous. He was bent. He was misshapen, not only outside, but inside. His face was hideous. And Caridwin, of all her magic spells, there was none that she knew or could discover that could change him into the beautiful young man she wished for him to be. So she knew what many people have known before and since. If you can't be pretty, you gotta be smart. <laughs> <laughs> and so she resolved to create a potion that would give this boy wisdom, inspiration, that would give him knowledge beyond any knowledge anyone had ever had before. And she delved into her books. She delved into her darkest arts to learn this potion. And she discovered that by picking certain herbs each day of the year, certain herbs when the moon was in such and such a position, when the stars were here and there, if she gathered herbs for one year and one day and filled her great cauldron with these herbs and then kept it bubbling, boiling, brewing for another year and a day. At the end of that time, three drops would leap out of that cauldron and those three drops would be filled with wisdom. They would have knowledge. They would have all manner of knowing in them. And if they struck a person on the head, that person would be filled with that wisdom. But there was a byproduct. Everything else in the cauldron, once the three drops had left it, that cauldron would be filled with the most poisonous brew that had ever existed. And the cauldron itself would give a shriek and a scream and would crack open and the poison would pour itself upon the earth. A small price to pay, she thought, for my son, for my child. And so she gathered her herbs into the cauldron and she filled it with water. And then she began the tiresome work of keeping that cauldron boiling for a year and a day. She gathered sticks, she gathered twigs, she gathered logs. It was hard, weary work. And she saw in the distance an old blind man being led by a young boy. And she called out to them. She said, you, uh, come here. There's work for you to do. And the boy said to the old man, come this way. I don't know what she wants. He said, my name is Guyan Bach. What can we do for you? She said, I will feed you and care for you. If you, she said to the old man, stir this cauldron each day for a year and a day. And you, boy, gather twigs, gather logs, gather sticks. Keep this fire burning. Don't let the fire go out. And he promised that he would. And so he spent a year and a day, the boy, Guyan Bach, and the nameless old blind man who <clears throat> does nothing in the story except stir the pot. <clears throat> and a year passed, and the cauldron bubbled, and the cauldron simmered. And when the time was approaching, the year and a day was to come, Caridwin took her son, as ugly and hideous as he was, and she placed him just in front of the cauldron. And she waited, and the cauldron bubbled, and the cauldron simmered. And then the cauldron itself began to hiss, and the cauldron itself began to screech, and the cauldron began to shriek and scream, and three drops leapt 
from that cauldron, and Guyen Bach, who had gathered together sticks and twigs in the smoke of the fire for a year and a day, he thought to himself, my effort will not be wasted on this lad. <laughs> and he thrust Caridwin's son aside, and he stood as the three drops flew through the air and landed on his forehead. And at that moment, the cauldron cracked and broke, and the poison brew fell across the land. And Caridwin shrieked and screamed, What have you done? But Guyen Bach, he was filled with knowledge, with wisdom, with inspiration. It flooded his mind. He seemed to know everything, and he knew that Caridwin was very angry at him. <laughs> and Caridwin, when she had gathered herself together with a shriek and a scream, she came running after Guyen Bach, and he knew enough, even without the three drops, to run himself. <laughs> he ran as quickly as he could, but she was fast, and she came closer and closer, and he said, if only I could, but I can. I can transform myself, and he did because he knew how, and he became a rabbit. And the rabbit ran through the bushes, and the rabbit ran up the hills and down the hills. But Caridwin, she had studied her magic. She had studied her books. She knew transformations too, and she became a greyhound. And the greyhound came closer and closer to the rabbit, and the rabbit knew he was in trouble. And the rabbit came to the edge of a pond, and the rabbit said, can I become a fish? Yes. I can. And the rabbit transformed to a fish and plunged into the water. And Caridwin transformed herself into a pike with sharp teeth and came pursuing even under the water faster and faster. Guyen Bach as a fish, he swam and swam, but the pike was getting closer. Can I become a bird? Yes, I can. <laughs> he leapt from the water and flew high into the air. And Caridwin, ah, she was wise to his tricks. The pike transformed into a hawk. And the little bird fluttering through the air, growing weaker and weaker. And the hawk, growing more and more determined, came closer and closer. And Guyen Bach flew over a farmyard. And there, beside the barn, was a great field, a great pile of millet. And he said, can I become? a grain of millet, and he did. And that tiny grain fell through the air and landed among the thousands and thousands of pieces of millet. And the hawk circled, thinking. And the hawk transformed. Any guesses? Of course. What? Oh. A very hungry chicken. And the chicken began to peck and peck and peck. Was he here? Was he here? Was he here? And the chicken swallowed Guyenbach. An interesting problem. <laughs> What now? I ask my fourth graders. He's gonna become like a monster, and he's gonna become like huge, and he's gonna be like burst out of her body. <laughs> he did transform inside of the woman, but he did not burst from her body, not at once. He spent nine months in her belly and he transformed himself into a baby. And when the baby was born, Caridwin looked at the child and her thought was to destroy it. This was her enemy, Guyen Bach, who had stolen the knowledge, the wisdom, the inspiration. But the baby was so beautiful. She could not bring herself to destroy this child, but she could not keep it either. So instead, she put the baby into a basket, and she covered the basket over with a hide, and she sealed it up as best she could, and she pushed it out onto the river, 
and the great tradition of Moses and many people before him. Guyen Bach, reborn as a baby, traveled down the river. And the writer of the manuscript says, and we will leave him there. <laughs> <laughs>